The Empire. I'm Pete Barenberg here again, always with Nick D. Francesco, CEO and owner of Pure Well. How's it going there, buddy? Good, Pete. I'm good, Pete. We're getting ready for the Cannabis in Sports Conference this weekend. So a couple of the guys that we've been interviewing as well as some new people we'll be getting to mix it up with. So excited about that for sure. And I guess we got some some special guests today that I know the listeners want to hear about. What do we got? Absolutely. Woe's joining us today is we've got the founders of Respect My Region. We have Joey J. Ping Bravo and Mitch Pfeiffer. How you guys doing? Doing all right, man. Man, getting the day going, you already know. Appreciate you guys having us. Of course. Thanks of course. for making the time. So I guess you guys are going on the road to about December uh, 10th, right? You're going to do about 20, 250 episodes, going to city to city, region to region, talking about uh, cannabis entrepreneurs, anyone that's in the industry. Uh, you know, this is the second year you guys doing it. Tell me what I uh, got you into it and, and what you look for when you're trying to find these people. Yeah, this this is our, our second year doing the doing the national run following three years of, of just a West Coast weed tour. Uh, in the West Coast Weed Tour days, we were actually in a van for three weeks, driving up and down the, the West Coast on a full-on tour, moving to this national one. I was telling you fellas a little bit off air. I'm not trying to be on the road for four months straight. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, it's a mixture of a digital co- content campaign mixed with some travel. Um, so we're doing content the whole five months and intermittent travel, just kind of flying, driving in and out to different places all over the country basing some of that on just visiting dispensaries and cultivation facilities and some of that kind of on the trade shows and events that pop up around the map. So we can kind of double team, go somewhere for an event, do a bunch of networking, go shop at dispensaries, go visit facilities. Uh, we're, we're pretty efficient when we're on the road traveling, man, what we can get done in, in a 48 hour, 50 hour span is, is usually pretty impressive by most standards. Um, so we just really need a little bit of time in a market and, and we can connect with a lot of people and, this, this campaign was really built selfishly for us to how can we growth hack building out relationships and, and content at scale over a short amount of time with it with like hyper focused intention and purpose. And then as far as like what other people can expect from it is really just looking at what legal cannabis looks like across the map. So, I mean, are they contacting you? Are you reaching out to these people? I mean, how are you finding the people that you're you're going to check out? Research, straight up research. We do a lot of research. We do Google, we do weed maps, we do Leafly. We call dispensaries. We find people on LinkedIn. We we literally, I find I go on LinkedIn and LinkedIn will just show me like, oh damn, like this person just got hired as the GM at Massachusetts Cannabis Co. And all of a sudden, I just screenshot it, send it to Mitch, and we just hit him up and we're like, yo, congratulations on the new job what can we do to support you win? Like, cause your industry is just getting going, right? A lot of these places are just getting going. So what's good or great is super subjective. So this whole campaign is about identifying just quality first, right? And then determining how good or how great they are after that. People are just looking for good weed. They're just looking for a good deal. They're looking for consistent things. So we just do some basic market research. We just search in the cities. We search on Instagram, we search on LinkedIn. And then we just shoot our shot and we literally shoot our shot until they tell us no, uh, we don't stop. And if they don't respond, yeah, we just keep, we just keep that. It's like, you know, it's digital guerrilla street team. Yeah. That's basically what it is. So what, I mean, now you're talking about, thousand, yeah, go ahead. Thousand percent. That's, I mean, we call it the swarm method, but it was literally taken from the guerrilla marketing days when we were physically popping up selling shirts. Like if you had 20 homies and they were all good looking and they all were talking to somebody walking by, Bro, you're getting sales. You're getting opportunities. And so we shoot our shot online and we make magic happen. So it's not someone that you're looking for just like to make the cut. You're you're finding out to see when you go and do a review at that place or the facility or whatever to see if they make the cut. Right? I mean, you're basically is, reviewing a lot of the stuff or is that is that what I'm trying to understand? Both. Both. At this point, at this point, uh, Unless unless you're a new state that just went online, like literally, like like say like a lot of a lot of states, they always launch it off in January, February, March. Right. They kick it off or whatever, whenever they're like it's approved. And then a couple of years later, it comes online. Right. So like what we do is we start planting the seed early just about those areas. Who got licenses? What's you know, cookies just got a new spot there. Right. They're always right. first in the market. So what we do is we just find out what's what's good out there. We talk to humans like you guys and just say, hey. You know, what are your thoughts on this area? What have you heard about this? 
And usually if, if there's someone that's respected or been around already for a bit, then we go two routes. We offer them a partnership to participate for free. So that way we can just showcase the culture. It's our job. It's our duty. It's our role in the space to showcase the culture and to amplify it. That's, that's what, that's our role in this industry. So depending on the type of person we're talking to, the type of business, we play it two ways. Are you going to fuck with us for free and do it one time for the culture? Or do you guys have a big enough budget already because you're killing it to where you can physically support the culture? And we're not afraid of asking for money and we're not afraid of doing shit for free. And either way, our role has to be fulfilled. Some way or another, these podcasts have to happen. And the interviews, they have to happen. The articles, they got to happen. And so that's our duty here is to just showcase that and figure out a way to get that done. No, no, of course. I'm just saying quality wise, like it would be it would be awesome if you chuck them out and you talk to me. No, for example, we're not even in the, you know, we're not marijuana per se. We're in cannabis. We're on the hemp side. So we do custom formulations for specific disease states on the medical level. Okay. That's what we're known for. Uh, launch two publicly traded companies, but I've been in hemp for 10 years because of the fact of not just because of the regulations and everything. I just felt like the medical benefits outweighed some of the cannabis. I didn't want to have to worry about being Scarface bringing cash in. Um, I, everything was bankable, but I really, we connect to doctors, healthcare professionals, athletes, people that are really using relief and products. What we make our name on is quality, right? And, and yeah. what we do different than anybody else. And that's why I'm asking, like, everybody's got a company, you know, it's just, how are you weeding this out? Like, obviously cookies, biggest name. In the I see what industry. you did there. <laughs> so um, they, it's just, what are you doing to figure that out and what makes it, them different? It, or it, I mean, for us, it, I mean, again, quality is so subjective and they're the most popular items. Like the, if you look in, on the data at headset and the BDS analytics, the top selling products are not the best. They're never the best. The top selling products are the most affordable with the highest THC. It happens every time in every state. So what we've done is we do a general outreach to about 500 to 1,000 dispensaries across the country. We do look for the best based on Google reviews, Leafly reviews, Weednaps reviews. They have the star system, right? So we, we, we try to find people that are at least a 4.25 or higher, right? That's generally what we're looking for is an 8 out, an eight out, of, uh, an eight out of 10 or higher in terms of you know, an 8 out of 10 ranking, right? Usually the Google stuff's out of 5 or Weednaps out of 5 or whatever. So we start there. And then from there, because all the products and the brands and what's popular, what's the best is all different. You got to think like there is a best product of mids. There is a best product of lows. Of right? course. There is a quality. There's quality in all these different category, categories and niches. And Mitch and I ran into this problem before. We were like, man, I, you know, we had friends that were like, man, why are you guys reviewing mids? Like, why are you guys featuring this? We're like, bro, people like a million people bought that product like last year, like we have to talk about it. It's one of the best at what it is. And uh, in, a direct response to you for, to answer the question is we do referrals first. We give the culture a chance to speak and share who they think is the best. When we're leading up to the, the tour before it launches, we do a massive outreach just to identify and make a list. What dispensaries we have to have participate, right? What brands, are subjectively the best of the best in terms of can of quality, mids, et cetera. It's really easy just to look at dispensaries and be like, oh, damn, everyone carries this brand. Like, we have to, we got to chat with them, right? And, and Cali, that's your Pacific Stones, you know, your Amores and things. I, I think, yeah, and like, there's two things that we look for that I always tell, and, and so like Joey's right, we do a lot of online research, and then there's a lot of outreach. You know, we come from the music space, and, and it's always been localized content, so we've, I don't know if we're good at or we've just always been doing, you know, looking at other areas or regions, if you will, to tie it into our, our brand name and trying to identify through boots on the ground what is like hot locally. And I always when we when I always call people, whether we're cold calling a dispensary to ask them for brand recommendations or we're talking to somebody that's like vetted and trusted, you know, that's really from the culture or really ahead that that should be respect, you know, everything they say should be held in high regard, right? Because there's those individuals as well. You know, we always ask for two different things. Like when we're looking for the best, I put that into like Joey saying two different categories. There is like the top five that the heads or the culture would agree on. And whether we're talking about hoops, 
skateboarding top five rappers of all time. We're never going to have a top five we all generally agree on. That top five might be 12 that we all loosely would be like, yeah, I respect you if you put one of those interchangeable in your top five. So we try to identify that subjective top five, which is really eight to 12. And then we ask, what's the most popular? Because like Joey said, th those are two s different subsets. Sometimes they cross over. Sometimes the best is one of the most popular. That's kind of a rare anomaly. Um, but for us, it, it's, it behooves us to touch on things that the culture and the heads generally agree on because then we're curating accurate, authentic content that is, that is uh, talking about what's good. And then what's popular has benefit because if it's the most popular, it's probably the most requested. It's probably the most recognizable and it probably commands the most search queries. So it behooves us to talk about that, talk about that from a digital perspective. So we kind of put it in two different buckets. Yeah, of course. Quality is subjective. And it's just, and we talked to somebody a show ago that talked about having the first purple strain in a location, like moving it from Cali to Oklahoma. And yeah, they have an amazing strain, but it was actually the color that people were going crazy for what made it the best. So it had nothing to do. Now, they said it smoked smooth and it did all this other stuff. But the truth is, it was about the color. And, and it wasn't for them about quality in, in that situation. Um, but everybody's always like, well, what's the strength of this THC? And, but look, what are you looking f at it for? And I think that's why it's subjective, right? I mean, they're looking for terpene profiles. They're looking for, it's not just, oh man, this fucked me up. That they're looking for different things. I mean, that's kind of, like I said, what we do. We do custom formulations for something specifically that they're looking for. So it's not, now again, this is not stuff, most of the stuff is not have psychotropic effects and we do have both, right? But, but they're looking for something specific, a specific feeling. And some person might want to be up and clear and another one wants to be crouch locked, right? So, so that's why I was asking. I was, look, it's a, when it comes to me, I mean, we have farms, of course. It's the quality of how they're growing, what, how they're doing it, you know, how they're putting products out. I don't know. There's just more to it. You know, everybody and their mom has a farm now or has a cannabis brand or, or trying to launch something. And you know, that's what we do on the show. We're, we're out, we're basically bringing people together to understand the ins and outs of the industry, how, what it's really going on, what's not going on. And so I'm not grilling you. I'm just trying to, I'm giving you guys some, I'm trying to understand how they can use you as a service to be like, they are the leading experts or they're giving reviews, not just of doing research, anecdotal research, how they're getting there. So they're like, this is a trusted source. So sure. I'm trying to boost you guys up, <laughs> and that's what I'm trying. Not like to you're do just here. pushing a product, you know, because yeah, yeah. someone gave you some money. You know, it's not just product pushing. You're actually, you know, doing yeah. some work and research on everything to figure out, you know, what is actually quality for whatever spe specific region you're actually in. Yeah, and, that, and that's exactly it, right? Is I'm not from any one place. I, mean, I grew up in Indiana, Texas, Seattle. I've been in Cali three years. I'm a I've been a chameleon my whole life. And why I joined Respect My Region is is allowed me to. Uh, be my true version of myself. Right? Our platform is, is built on authenticity, is built on realness, is built on being not just fake cool or making people happy. Like Mitch and I regularly have done things that are against the grain in our industry for a decade, not just cannabis. We're talking rapper lists, Mitch getting threats. We don't care. We're not afraid. We have a, we have a process. It's a system. It's built on two different other people's systems that was that helped them make millions of dollars at what they do. Our stuff is all data driven. We do 10 categories, 10 points per category. There's uh, two different sections of our reviews, a taste test portion. Uh, and then like the overall, which is the accumulation of 10, 10, uh, 10 categories, 10 points. Um, I, I've, we, we, we do get handed a lot of product and we do get paid to do reviews. It's not every time and it's not all the time. We write about artists that don't pay us and we write about weed and review weed that don't pay us. I have a ton of weed sitting here right now underneath this desk that I personally dropped 600 to $700 for. Not one of those people is going to get 100% niceness on every one of those videos. Matter of fact, we, we, I was doing three reviews last night with one of my podcast hosts and he straight up failed one of them. And they personally walked me around their house. I met their daughters. I met the wife took the took a safari through their grow in the back of a pickup we don't care how nice you treat treat us or whatever it is this is 100 percent for the customers i'm a medical patient i've had kidney stones over 15 times i have ibs every day 
stress and anxiety physically makes my stomach upset, and weed is the only thing that allows Mitch and I to be what we believe is the greatest version of ourselves. This is what I want. Functional. This is what I want. This is what we do. We're trying to not only legitimize the fact that we're trying to get the best strains. Remember, now, do you do a lot of reviews for CBD and hemp, or is it just marijuana, cannabis, that type of thing? I mean, you guys know as well as I do that the, the hemp and the hemp farmers out there, the stuff that tastes good, it's just not readily accessible like that. They're not growing that in downtown LA. They're not growing great craft hemp anywhere except for Southern Oregon and, and regions like that, to be honest, Western oh, Canada, Pueblo, Colorado. I was, well, was going to say Colorado. You've got Maine you've, uh, regions, microclimates, right? That, that that's where it's able of to course. be grown because indoor hemp, indoor hemp is a $60 eight and no one's buying $60 hemp eights. That's not a thing. So like, no matter how hard they try to sell them, <laughs> no matter how hard you try to sell boutique hemp, I'm not, no one's going to walk in there. And, and buy and buy that at a smoke shop. That's not something that they buy for 60 bucks at a smoke shop. No, but you're talking about smokables. Now, we don't do anything with flour that you smoke. Okay. We have a, we have a pen. Okay. That we use that we've processed down with distillate. But what we do is we take cannabis. Okay. Well, we take hemp. We break it down, obviously, do distillation process. We extract it, but then we add different molecules to it for specific disease states. So it's not just mm-hmm. about the taste. It's more about the purity. Again, USDA certified organic, kosher, vegan, non-GMO, pesticide free. Our COAs are nine pages. That's the starting point of what we do. So I would love for you guys to come and check out the farm. That's fine. Or just come and check us out in Florida or try the product and understand what we do is completely different than what anybody else is doing. It's not flower to flower. I don't sell flour. <laughs> so we yeah. sell finished goods that we do custom formulations to. And that's yeah. why I, I completely understand. I mean, we're going to compare <laughs> hemp to marijuana. People are going to want to smoke weed. I mean, they're not going to want to smoke hemp. That's fine. I mean, but there's, if some- there's level, right? The, the psychology of that consumer is people are cannabis friendly. They're not, they didn't start off hemp friendly. So they're, they, they technically work backwards or they work sideways, left or right, depending on the product. Now, in, it's more in society, like, but not in real life, in because society. we know that hemp yeah. has been around since, for, you know, 4000 BC when they were making textiles. They just started, they started yeah. smoking it one day and go, oh, it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. I have a couple of products. Here. This, this is a straight up CBD. Uh, it's a pouch that's a liquid pouch. Uh, this is super cool. Pour, drink, and, you know, Sup, sip it down like it's a Gatorade, uh, the little, you know, hydration packs. And these are CBD uh, straws or, you know, uh, stir sticks or something or, or something along those lines. Honey sticks so, or something? Honey sticks or something? No, it's, it's literally oh. a stir stick. So you oh, a stir stick. Okay. And then, and then whip it around or whatever. Uh, it's not a straw. I apologize. My homie's probably cringing if he ever sees this. <laughs> uh, 80% of our product is flour. And I'd say that's reflective of the market as well. When, 80, when 70 to 80% of the, of the market, and like you said, society is physically buying flour, 80% of our products that we review are going to be flour. Now, I do have, you know, Mitch is, Mitch is reviewing a lot of weed in Washington and Oregon. When he's in Cali, he does Cali. But generally speaking, um, I, I use edibles every day. I do use tinctures. I have capsules right here. And these are all products and vapes all the time. So I'm, I'm personally using five to seven different categories of products all the time. And members of our team are also similarly doing the same thing. The guys, the girls, uh, we, we have a, a couple of our more trusted people. They've been using cannabis for longer than me and a variety of products. And I think Mitch can speak on, um, again, the, 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 pers- the varying perspectives combined with our 10 categories that we use. Uh, and then doing it in multiple states. Again, the goal of this is really, we just want to give people trusted perspectives and a variety of them across across the continent. It, it was the West yeah. Coast at first and across the continent. And it's, about no, review, it. and it's about reviewing the product from the perspective of who it's for, right? Like Joey touched on that, you know, <laughs> as connoisseur level smokers or whatever, right? There's a certain quality of flour that if I'm putting my money out there, I mean, to be honest, even not even my money, like even if you give me it, I'm not going to I literally won't smoke it. Right. If it doesn't meet my standards or isn't a flavor profile that I enjoy Uh, um, when it comes to like vape pens, that's a popular one because 
a lot of people, we review a lot of vapes. They're super popular. Dissolute is one of the highest sellers, right? When it comes to the THC vapes, you know, Joey and I, same thing. We're never going to put our money out and buy a dissolute pen, but it's such a popular category if I can't not review it and I can't review it and immediately be like, oh, this is shit. Anyone that's smoking this should be smoking live resin. Like, sure, I believe that, but clearly the market data is showing that so many people are not doing it. I have to review this from the, per- or we have to review this from the perspective of, okay, if I'm, if, if this is the product I purchase and these are my expectations for said product, I can't compare that product to the top scale limited batch craft live rosin pen versus your hot dog water dissolute pen. You know, you can't, they, you can't compare those to one another. You have to look at it for what this product is for who it is and review it from that perspective. You might get some, some antidotes in there where it's like, all right, well, I prefer live resin because I get more flavor and this doesn't quite have that. But if I was this type of person, so it's very much looking at things like that. And then same thing, similarly, like, there's certain terpene profiles I know I just won't enjoy. So there's no way I could authentically review it. I'll have to pass it off to someone on the team. It could be the award winning best fucking version of a Jack Herrera strain. And I fucking hate Jack. Like it does not matter how good it is. I'm going to fucking hate it because I dislike that flavor profile. So yeah, it makes we, sense. We, you got to say I'm biased. We want to be authentic and unbiased, but we also want to make sure it's it's set up for who it is, right? And, and well, they have and, best in class for cars, right? So you can't compare a Honda yeah. to a Rolls Royce. I mean, right. of course, right? But so there are still people who are shopping for that Honda, so you know you got <laughs> you got to get them some information as well. <laughs> No, and, and that's, I think that's the case. And it could be THC content levels. You know, somebody doesn't want to go to a live resin or something. It's just too strong for them. It's just not what they're looking for. You know, so of course, there's going to be something for everything. And that going said, I mean, obviously you're going to events, you're going to uh, festivals and things like that. Is there any names? I mean, not the name dropping, but there's got to be some people that you're meeting. You're like, oh, that was cool that I met him or I learned something or something crazy happened. Oh, no. Give me some dirt, man. Come on. Give me something. Yeah. Toil on the soil. My, Mitch, my life, been, my life been crazy the last three weeks. I'll let you go first, Mitch. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, we're, we're meeting a lot of people, right? Like through through the through our podcast and through just our general out people outreach to us, PR companies outreaching to us, or, or us doing the cold outreach. You know, we've been able to meet. Uh, you know, the founders of a lot of the companies, right? Like a lot of the the, the biggest companies in cannabis. We've been able to meet them. Um, you know, we just did an interview with Burner a couple weeks ago and put that out. It did really well. Um, you know, we just did some work for Exhibit. Um, you know, he has a cannabis brand. Um, we're in talks with a couple other, ra- you know, people from the hip hop community that have uh, brands. And I, I always laugh, you know, after doing 10 years of music blogging and music marketing. Uh, obviously, we've been in cannabis quite a while as well, but cannabis has connected us to more higher tier, higher profile rappers than being in fucking rap is. And that just is so funny to me and blows my mind. But these, these guys need help selling their shit. You know, I guess they didn't need help selling records, but they need help moving their fucking weed brands. So the circle keeps getting bigger, huh? <laughs> Cannabis, Man, cannabis brings crazy. everyone together on all different levels. You'd be surprised who we have on the show from all different types of levels and everybody has one common ground. You know, there's no socio socioeconomic, there's no demographics, there's nothing. There's no division. It's, it, it's, it's the love of the plant, you know, and, and business of the plant or, or whatever, whatever you're, you know, associated with the plant, but it's just kind of funny. I mean, we have conversations with, yeah, I just crazy, crazy conversations go on different levels of different people. And you go from someone that goes, I looked at cannabis when I was young as this was a bad thing and people would judge me. And, and now it's changed their life and helped them through cancer. So, and then we got, you know, rappers on that are like, I was in the ghetto smoking. I had cops coming after me, you know, <laughs> because we were smoking a little weed and now it's legalized in every state. So it's kind of crazy. Um, people are always pushing the boundaries. And this is kind of funny. I was looking at uh, people doing podcasts in crazy places, right? So um, they shut down, uh, the Sixth Avenue Bl- Bridge in Los Angeles, Domin- Re- Re- Dominican Republic, and just some places that um, rooftops and, and and what's the craziest place you've done a podcast or are you looking to do something just somewhere nuts? 
Um, you know, we did we did one at like a you know a, a, I won't call it a house, but a real nice I, I won't call it a mansion, but a real nice crib in in, in Bel Air. We did a podcast in the middle of a, a consumption cannabis event we threw, and so that was pretty dope. You know, to be out there with the Fresh Prince, you know, used to lay his head. Uh, and, <laughs> there you and go. There and then we and, they, and, and then we got, the one that tops that one, bro. The one that tops that one is the thirty nine floor, though. Oh yeah, yeah. I forgot about. I forgot. Oh, yeah, good. Thank you. For All right, tell us a little about Jack. What was that? Is I mean, because at the end of the day, bro, that you're right. That house wasn't a mention in Bel Air. Like, shout out to Judd, but it's just not. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, bro. We we threw a, we threw a, a West Coast weed tour event. I think it was year one, maybe year two. Uh, 39th floor of a building in Seattle. It's the has the highest in Seattle. It has the largest outdoor like rooftop area, like a like a loungey space. It's probably like, man, it's probably like 75 yards long. It's a big outdoor. Is it near the needle? Is it near the needle? No, it's on on the other side. Oh, okay. So you can can see the stadiums and the waterfront and the Ferris wheel. Got it, got it. It's the Columbia. That's all it is. It's it's literally by the Columbia Tower building down there, right? Okay. Yeah. And like. It's on the same. It's a, It's on the. It's in the same building as a, as the federal government. It's in the same building as the Seattle DEA. It's in the same building as major banks. It's in the same building as like Morgan Stanley and shit. Like, man, we're up there, thirty nine floor. We got a podcast going in the middle of the party. It looks. Like, it looks like the Breakfast Club in this bitch. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> all the mics and shit. Uh-huh. In there a bunch of weed. Like a bunch of girls. But it was lit, man. All the homies was there. Mitch and the other hosts were all doing their thing. There was just weed growing up everywhere. Like it was crazy. And then the party's just raging around it. That's this room in the center. So like the party was around it and then outside. So it was. Okay. And then outside we set. Outside, we set up like maybe seven or eight tents and created a little tunnel with, and then we lit it with like Christmas lights. So it was like a little tunnel and you had brands and booths just serving and like sampling people out and shit. It was, it was dope, man. And then it sounds, sounds like we should have been there, right, Pete? Sounds like he's just sitting there passing. It's like Mr. Johnson, Agent Johnson. Uh, how are you guys doing? Take a pass. Well, that's what I was going to ask him. I was going to, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, Mitch. What were we going to say? Our, our whole just... thing, man, is, is like we, we create experiences, bro. Like, like I've been to so many music festivals. I was at uh, the number one rated festival in the world last weekend for four days. The whole time we have media press access, which is the same as artist access. And we get to go to EDC. We get to go. We haven't gotten, like Mitch said, in, cannabis has opened the door for rap stuff and music stuff faster than regular world music stuff. EDM has always been open to us coming in and supporting. They want more support. So we get that access. We get like we were hanging out with the, one of the biggest artists in the world the whole weekend from Australia, and are up there on stage while he's crowing crazy in front of twenty thousand people. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's, nice. like that shit is dope. You feel me? To be rolling up the best weed in Canada backstage and shit like that. In Vegas, we were at G4 Live. The homie who's one of the co-owners of Planet Thirteen walks me up and introduces me to motherfucking Mike Tyson. Never in my life, in my regular path. And my dad's work path of Boeing and bullshit, would I ever have met Mike Tyson? Can't this. Damn good point. We just had oh. double M on, so we, we we were just it was funny because we were talking about it. Um so okay, so then so what is the best way to get to these high high profile uh people? I mean, obviously you gotta go around management, you gotta go publicist Content. and things. So what was the best way you guys have used to get around to get to these guys? Content content yep okay. we figure out if and, and then, so here's it first off you don't do content with the hopes of meeting those people you do content with the hopes of working your way up to be around those people and that's okay. when your homies do, that's when like after that. you've done content work Good out, point. that's when, when, you, when you've supported the community of people that are around all these people that are in these communities in these in these uh cannabis or music or edm or rap or whatever it is when you support the people that that make Atlantic Records, that that make that artist pop, or that make this brand pop out, out wherever, then yeah, bro, all of a sudden, the person that works underneath you, the CEO, is like, yo, you got to work with my homies. They just put me on and like, look at all this other dope shit. Like, these are all the most popping people across the country. Like, you got to meet them. Like, they, like, whenever you launch a brand, Mike, this is my boy. You got to you gotta let them know. You, you, like, and that was the intro. Yo, bro, next time you launch a product, hit my boy Joey up, man. He knows he he covers all the best products in the country. Simple as that. Oh, yeah, what's it. up, Joey? Da, 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 da. Like to Mike Tyson, whether he remembers me or not, the guy he's standing next to just saw that interaction. 
And that's his marketing. All right. Strategy, right? Yep. So that, and that's, that, that's how that works is f- do content to get access, get access and then go network. And then hopefully after you've done that for three, five, 10 years, you're getting introduced to celebrities at the highest level. Like we are. And like Mitch touched on a couple of his favorites. We've been blessed to work with Super Bowl quarterback, Super Bowl winning quarterback, Jim McMahon, Kyle Turley, all pro. Uh, we've been able to work. We had Kyle Turley on the show. He's awesome. Yep. He, Kyle's great. It's, it's, uh, we just ran a press release for Sean Kiernan at Weed for Warriors. We work with Cannabis Talk 101. Nice. Secret Sesh. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a lot of great brands out here in California that have a lot of respect, and we are actively trying to work and align ourselves with people that represent both the culture and they also have a name associated with it. We've worked with a lot of people that are smaller for a long time, and now we're proud to finally have our friends straight up being like, Joey, you got to meet this dude. Mike Tyson, you got to meet my friend. Like telling someone like that, you got to meet my, you know, some nobody. Come on. She's crazy. Well, especially, I mean, come on. Uh, we were all really young. nobody. You built yourself into something. So definitely not nobody, man. That's for sure. Man, we, bro, we come from Ellensburg, Washington, college startup. We failed at close. Mitch, look at, look at my business partner there with his goofy ass. Like, we don't vote. Like, there's so <laughs> many different rooms that we don't fit into. And we, we're nobody still. And that's why we work so hard. It's a joke. But, you know, Mitch and I shit talk all the time. So this is, you know, it ain't nothing new. So. Well, nah, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, what I was going to talk about is, so Mike, you got to be honest with you. I love what he was doing. He just put out a uh, a half bit out ear. I mean, come on. That was the, one of the best things. I mean, obviously, we remember Mike Tyson's punch out. So to meet Mike Tyson in, in, in real life when you talk to him and, and now what he's doing in cannabis is huge. But when I saw him do the uh, the, the, bit, the, the, the half bit ear, I just I lost it. I go, that, that's out of control. That, that's great marketing right there. Smart marketing. <laughs> that's, that's, I, I thought that was, that was amazing. Um, so what are you guys? All right. So now where are you on the tour? I mean, where are you going next? What's going on? I mean, obviously you're going to uh, December 10th, so you got a lot more time. You have a little downtime a couple weeks now. I you were telling me. So uh, what's next? Um, no downtime. There are so many events in California this weekend. We are going to at least three. I meant to say from traveling. I meant to say from traveling. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah from yeah from tra- from traveling. You know, Joey's in the in the LA market, so stuff's always happening. So he'll be he'll be staying you know somewhat local and then around California. I'm in Seattle, and so when oh, I say I not traveling. I, I'm still I'm still I'm in Seattle. He's in LA, so I'm still bopping around Washington, hitting Portland every now and then. He's still hitting California, but in terms of getting on the road, road um, coming up here in September, I know we're gonna be. Man, I think we have this stretch where we're we're both flying out to Boston in like September 20th. We'll be out there for a week, kind of driving all over the state, hitting Maine. Then I'm flying with Joey back to L.A. We'll be there for a couple of days. Then we're in Vegas for a couple of days. Then we're back in L.A. for a few days. And then we're in Santa Rosa for Hall of Flowers for a few days. And then uh, you guys coming down to South Florida? Uh, I don't I don't know. The, the only issue so, is like our, our model kind of depends on like wreck. You know, us being able to go into stores and just buy stuff and, and is really like how Joey said, like content. We really lead with content. That's we get ROI on that down the road or use the content to build relationships. So any state that's kind of has that medical block isn't as friendly or as accessible to our model. So we, we have some people in Florida and we'll be covering some stuff out there. But as far as me and Joey, I don't you know, there's some other markets that are a little bit more priority. You me. want more full rec there's, places. There's, you don't want just medical. Yeah, you want layers. full rep. Well, we want well, well, the, the give and take. We have partners in various states across the country. We have and partners and and staff, right? So we have we have a human in, in Georgia. We have a human that, that's in South Georgia. We have a human in North Florida. Um, they already go to shops. They already review weed here and there. Uh, we have a per, we have a person in New York. We got a person. We got a couple people in Illinois. Um, got influencers across the country that we're working with here and there to support. There's various ways that we're, you know, partnering and navigating these puzzle pieces to try to just get the content to happen. Again, our goal of this is just to figure out how to showcase as much of the culture across the country as possible. And even with you guys, if this conversation leads to you guys helping us review weed down there in, in Florida, so be it. We don't necessarily, it's not about not caring who's a part of it, but you got to remember every perspective matters. So if this right. is just one right. perspective or two humans perspective into what Florida looks like, that's huge. And because then next year I'll get five next, And then after that, it'll be 10. 
and then and then it'll just snowball into people submitting us content, which is the goal. We want our goal is to create enough power and snowball effect that we have user submitted content the same way Leafly gets reviews. So that way we ultimately have a never ending engine of user generated content plus our curation. We feel that that's the most authentic for what we're trying to achieve with this campaign on top of what we do in the music space. I mean, have you noticed a big jump before the year one and year two? I mean, just in, huge. yeah, huge. We're right? in year five. We're in year five on this campaign. Okay. And every year we've done things differently. Uh, COVID hit. We went from doing events and parties and reviewing weed and physically driving to a lot of places to doing 80 podcasts with guests across the country and just breaking our model and just saying like, hey, we're going to sell our car and we're going to rebuild and buy a different one and try that one out. And yeah, that podcast sense. method really worked for us. And then we did eat. We did lose. Uh, we did spend a lot of money. That, uh, I'd say in year one of COVID and year two of COVID, just specifically on product. And as we were spending a lot, it was me mainly spending a ton of money on it. I had a job that was making enough money where I could do that and afford to invest in the content as a relationship and, you know, and smoke good weed for it. And Perks. what we realized very quickly is that, again, if I just went and bought the most fanciest brands or the most expensive people and we swarmed them guerrilla marketing style on social and on LinkedIn and we emailed and blew them up, you know, in seven different places, they were all responding. We, we had gotten big enough in the two years of doing the idea that everybody started responding. We added beer bros and a bunch of media partners and no one really says no to the free content anymore. They may not respond because they don't see the email, but they aren't saying no if they get on the phone with us. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> We got to figure out. We'll, we'll definitely work together. Obviously, we're on the hemp side. You can review our products. Check us out. Um, we we always love working with everybody that's on the show. So we'll definitely figure out how we can work together. And um, you know, I think you guys will we'll bring it. Maybe the hemp and all that's not your thing. Maybe we can make you a believer too. So <laughs> maybe you just have some problems. We, or we, you- sold, we sold hemp flower pre rolls. We sold we sell we sell hemp CBD products. We just ended the relationship with the manufacturer. Uh, manufacturer manufacturer. Uh, they were out of Wisconsin, um, and so it's not that we don't believe in it. It's just that the amount of people participating in uh, in that is very low. In the in year one through three on the West Coast Weed Tour, we reach out to a ton of CBD companies. There just wasn't interest in participating. And yeah, there. That's we a there, different market. It's well, it's changed. It's, you know, change, it's consolidated now. It's consolidated yeah. now. You know, before there was everybody and their mom had CBD and they thought it was a fad and all that, where it's now after COVID, it's definitely consolidated. Again, our market is more for people that actually have medical conditions, right? So they yeah. use our products because they really can't sleep or they g- genuinely have pain or inflammation or depression or, you know, stress and these types of IBS, things. IBS, Crohn's, any of that. So everything that you yeah. actually mentioned that we have a medical problem, I have a product for that. Now, yes, it might not get you high, okay, but it'll treat it a lot better than just cannabis alone or for people that just don't want to get high or they got to work all day long or, or whatever it is and they still got to deal with these problems. That's who we target. So it really is a different market than what you're normally doing. But you should have a little bit of everything. So that's why I said, I Absolutely. think us working together, these people will still be looking for this type of, of, of product as well. So we, um, we, we review everything so, as it comes. Well, I know Colin just did, uh, we, or maybe not Colin, but I know we just did some uh, hemp topicals, some CBD topicals. We definitely get sent. I get handed a ton of, you know, I spoke at the USA CBD Expo in Chicago about marketing and things like that on TikTok and Instagram. And I met a ton of CBD, Delta 8, HHC. THCO, THCP, all these different cannabinoid uh, products that are out there, and we do we we review them all. It's not again, we, it's not we don't not put effort into that. It's just a matter of when this campaign is called the North American Weed Tour, the hemp and CBD companies are always feeling like, oh, why am I so overshadowed? This is, but it's when you look at the oh, you're not weed. Other, uh, right. There's all yeah. I mean, there's always a section for CBD products, and so we do want people to know there's a space for you guys. We're here, we're ready. I, I'm familiar with great CBD products. I have tried a lot of them. I know things that taste good. I know what it should, what it should and shouldn't taste like from strain to strain and the, and the hemp varietals as well. I'm familiar with CBD isolates and hemp isolates on all the different cannabinoids. We've done research and published articles on all of it. So good. 
Um, I'd, I'd love to try your products. I personally am a cannabis patient and, and a CBD patient because I have IBS and Crohn's kidney stones 15 times ruined my, I know that's crazy. 15 times. I mean, that's, whew, that's, that sounds very painful. Boys, that's that's Yankee boys. level coming up the Yankee level championship. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Stay away from the energy drinks, guys. Monster and Rockstar uh, combined with smoking really does damage to your body just due to the natural levels of dehydration you experience. Smoking is not good. Let's, let's clarify something. Smoking is not good for anybody. It's straight up. No matter what anybody says, smoking weed is not good. It, it tightens your blood vessels. It restricts blood flow and circulation. It doesn't allow your body to heal faster. It might make you feel better in the short term, but it is not the end-all, be-all, the physical act of smoking. There are better products in the world of cannabis slash THC that are better and more effective than smoking. You can get the strain you like in a full spectrum oil. You can get the strain you like in an edible and it can be sugar free. So this and it can be a beverage without any sugar either or any uh, food coloring additives, depending on how much of a freak you really are when it comes to all those little details. See, I, and, and, I, and I, I get that those nuances matter. I understand that. I, we come from Seattle. It's the pickiest group of people in the country. Outside of- I was just there. It's, I, you know what I felt in Seattle was? It was crazy because I was just there. The Jetsons. It's some of the stuff that I, when I go there, we're in the middle of Seattle and people are walking out. Oh, no, you don't need to pay for it. We know what you put in your bag. I'm like, wait, wait, what? Oh yeah, don't don't park your car. It goes on a little machine and it goes down seventeen, uh, you know, floors down and it parks for you. Or just, I just was like new world order. Everybody, I was just like, you know, especially coming from you know, I, you know, travel all the time. But I love Seattle. I thought the people were nice. It was, I was, it was a city, but it also felt live. With, I mean, there's trees on trees all over rooftops and everyone's very health focused. Of course you have all the major hubs over there. So no, yeah, Seattle was very health conscious. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, of course there's a lot of people and, and our target markets are, are the people that are looking for, you know, alternatives, but they, they really have medical issues. And so, um, it would be yeah. cool to, that you guys remove the products cause I think you'd love them. Yeah, absolutely. If you guys, you know, let's definitely connect offline and, and figure out how to get me a box of something so that way we can run through it. You know, the products that I don't personally, like, again, what Mitch said earlier, the products that I don't personally find the need to use that I wouldn't be the ideal person for, the, the CBD infused rose waters and yeah, rose bombs no. and all the different kinds of... Right. What that. is that? That's ridiculous. Um, I know. Trust me. I give it to the girl that I'm dating and I Have talk to her and I get feedback. And then I also send everything to my mom. Mama Ping gets to try all these products and FaceTime with me once or twice, three times a week, whenever we send her stuff. And she gives me metic- meticulous feedback. We have been See, we like that. that. Mamas love us. But Mitch, now is this, I mean, plausible? He gave it to his girlfriend for a rose bath. Are we sure Joey didn't just jump in there? Little rose bath action. I mean, are we, I mean, really, are we to believe this? I haven't really met many females that enjoy the company of Joey. So, you know, I think it's all cat, man. (laughs) So now we know it's Tuesday nights. What's going on over the Bravos? Let me tell you a little story about Mitch. Let me tell you a little story about how many times in a row I went to Mitch's house in college and he was getting out of the shower. (laughs) <laughs> oh, like at least seven visits in a row. I'm just here to buy a visit, you know, just buy a fucking camera, buy it out. This guy Mitch is like, come inside, JP. Oh, see? <laughs> this is There's only the time stuff time. you get at Empire. See this? The inside story. <laughs> the real question, though, is he tightening that towel or loosening the towel? Because there's a big <laughs> difference between the two. <laughs> Ironclad grip. He said, he said, he's. He said, he said, did you bring the rose water with CBD? <laughs> <laughs> and you said, of course. I needed some help. I need hey. some help putting the topical on my lower back. You know, that I can reach back there, you know. Right, right. Medical, right. You know, it's purely, <laughs> purely medical. Purely medical. He's, right? he's got the fingers that can reach. I'm having hamstring issues, inner hamstring. Yeah, we get it. All right. What's uh, who was the our favorite uh, football player that just had those special uh, massage that he was saying that oh. he needed the special spots hit? Watson. Watson. 
I mean, if you listen to some of that stuff, it's just like, oh, oh my, my God. God. <laughs> this man should be put away forever. Oh, no. <laughs> like I said, Mitch, Mitch is more the diva. Man. Mitch, Mitch has had an old, old man. They called him old. He got his Instagram account, Old Head Mitch. You know, his Twitter account, Old Head Mitch. He's, <laughs> no. he's, he's the old one on the squad. His back's been hurting since he first started hooping and falling off skateboards. So, you know, Sorry. this guy is definitely, you know, he's getting massages, hitting chiropractors, you know, he, he got his little one running around. He, he's, this guy definitely needs that CBD in his life. So Mitch, we could, we could, I'm telling you, I think you're going to be shocked. We, we, you know, we, we put it on it. Um, you know, again, athletes are coming by here all the time and we do his stuff and we, we give it, we give things to people that, you know, look, they're, they're, they're set up with opiates. They're set up with prescription drugs yeah. and they don't even know about cannabis. And I said, look, I, I really do have something that's going to work. And, uh, you know, of course they still smoke or whatever. They put a lot of our stuff on and they go, Wow. Wow, it, it really is not what I expected. It's not like stuff we've had before, and and that's what we do. So we'll definitely hook you guys up. We'll get you some swag. We'll get you some good stuff. Go ahead, Pete. Tell us. No, wrap it I up. did have. I will. I have one other quick question yeah, for Mitch. There, Pete. I need to know. Joey was saying you got threats, but what you did with the rapper list. I need to know what got you these threats. What did you do on this list? Oh yeah, good uh, question. Uh, man, I mean, anytime you put out, you like we were saying, best is subjective, right? Like anytime we list anything is an argument, right? I could come on here and whether I said MJ's the GOAT, LeBron's the GOAT, Kobe's the GOAT, one of you three guys is going to probably violently disagree with my stance, right? We'll never all agree on, on what's the best. Um, and so for a long time, like locally, we did a lot of like best hip hop lists, you know, year end lists you know, rap. And it's funny, even when you didn't do best, I started straying away from best and do like rappers you need to hear, like some super vague where it's like, this right. is everyone you need to hear, but here's just eight of the many you need to hear because right. you're not included. doesn't, you know, but anytime you do a list, people get, you know, I always would laugh, you know, people be like, nah, man, my cousin or my brother, like he's never even put a track out, but he's the best. It's like, how would I even know he's the best if he's just rapping in his basement and has never put anything out. So it just, anytime we put it out, it turned to so much, you know, and obviously being a white dude in hip hop and I'll take it with it. Right. I'll get knocked <laughs> for you know, this white boy. Okay, cool. You got me on that. This is not my culture. So I'll never be able to sit here and win that argument. Um, but listen, you know, Eminem still one of the best. But, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, he, he is, but you know, it is, it is black culture at the end of the day. Right. So any, yeah, right. any, any sort of feedback or criticism on that, I'll take it. I, I, I understand it. Um, but people would just do all sorts of these guys don't know what the fuck they're talking about this and that. And I started doing it because I thought everybody else didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. And I thought I, I love this buildup. <laughs> um, but, you know, it definitely got to where people would start messaging certain people that would know me would text would call. I mean, there was definitely some friction a couple times where someone was just simply not included on a list and, you know, there was some threats of violence that came my way, uh, you know, more than a couple times, you know, and, and being called a culture vulture, this and that. And, uh, you know, it was it was all good. Like anyone that really like if someone credible, like who I was like, all right, you are a talent or I understand why you believe that you're one of the best. I'll go pull up on you one-on-one -on -one and engage you. Like, no one ever, you know, thankfully, I, I, I've been punched in the face for other things, but, uh, <laughs> you know, none of these people ever punched me in the face because I think I, I didn't just hide behind the keyboard and I didn't talk shit. It was like, here's my thoughts, here's my opinions, and if you if you feel why, I'll engage with you. Like, you know, I'm not saying you're bad, but I think this person is here and there. This is where you're at. Like, you know, and I think I was always willing to help people. So it, I, I think, you know, there was definitely some criticism. Like, there's a lot of people – on Twitter stuff that would talk crazy who was like, I don't even know who the fuck you are. Nobody would put you in that. So I'm not, I'm not even going to entertain that. But if you someone is, seven, four, eight, six, nine, NW. Yeah, right. I mean, it, right. <laughs> but if, if, if someone is the, you know, I, I get it. Right. I come from that. If you're a musician, like you got to fight so hard to get noticed and get fans and pour so much of your heart and soul and money into something. And you should think you're the best, you know, if you're, if you're really doing something right, whether you're a sports player or, or a musician, you should think you're the best. So I understand and empathize with that. And I, I think I would engage with anyone, um, you know, definitely a couple different times I'd pull up to a location and, and some, it'd be a little funky, you know, you walk in the room and the, the atmosphere changes a little bit. Cause you know, there's someone there that doesn't like, you know, I was like, I have no issues with nobody, but someone really has issues with you. And 
thankfully nothing, nothing crazy really ever happened. I've been called all sorts of crazy names, definitely threatened. And, uh, you know, you know, thankfully I, I've never had to, I've never thrown, I, and I, I never would, I don't want to fucking throw hands over some goddamn list on the internet, man. Right. You know, like right. we can fight over some other shit, but not that. Man. Well, they do it at every list though. I mean, it's not just that. I mean, it could be, you just said sports. I mean, I went to school with Kobe. I, I literally grew up with Kobe. He was in lower Marion. I went to lower Marion. I went to the same high school. Wow. And, um, so, and, and to be completely honest with you, when I was younger, I didn't even know who Kobe was. When I walked into freshman year, I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's Kobe. <laughs> but I didn't know. Of course, we all knew Michael Jordan and everything like that. So, um, you know, so, so that was that I'm from Philadelphia. So, um, you know, the, the best, the best, I feel the best fan base in the country that will definitely throw a battery at you if needed. I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll do, we'll do anything that it takes to boo our own players if they give us one quarter of bad play. So, we're, I mean, but, um, so we're, we're obviously very opinionated on, on you, guys, you, guys some, you guys get some lazy athletes though. You guys get some lazy athletes out that way. Yeah. And you know, what's crazy. Harden. We and yeah, mm, this is all no new school. Remember, we had Rocky, you know, like we had all that blue collar, hard working yeah. hustle. That's what we're about, you know. And and the fact is, is this new lazy generation, yeah, this is not working for Philly. This is, we, you know, just speaking about Ben Simmons, to be honest. Well, Ben, ben Simmons is and know, the list grows, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> Trust the process, though. We'll trust the process. Well, we got rid of him. <laughs> I'll take Joel Embiid all day long, but 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 Ben Simmons. I mean, come on, he was a joke from the beginning. Um, but yeah. So, but what I was saying is, even they do it in the NFL, they do it with products, you know. And and like you said, I think everybody has their own idea of what's best. But what's best for you? You know, do you like a stone? You want Stone Cold Killer? Do you like a beast that's been playing and broken every award ever? Do you like someone that looks you in the eye and goes, I'm not going to beat you. I'm going to destroy you. I mean, what do you like in an athlete? And I think that's what people say. Oh, the goats, they separate those three goats. I mean, what do you say? Tom Brady? What do you, how do you not? I mean, is he automatic or do you put in all the old school guys or some of the new up and coming? But they don't have a history. They don't have rings. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you can make so many arguments of, and I think it's just what people like their playing style. If they could be in those shoes, what they would want to be if that was the top, if they were the goat. Right. That's, I mean, that's my honest opinion. And then everyone wants to play like Sunday, you know, Sunday week quarterback, but not a day have you ever been on that court or on that field or been hit like with these monsters and, torn a knee or i mean we talk about putting your life in the line for something athletes and real warriors is, is, is you know yeah so so i guess it takes us out but i mean we covered everything you guys are going to stay on for a minute we're gonna um we got to do a couple things afterwards and um i don't know pete anything else no nah, i'm gonna say one we really I do appreciate the times you guys made for it. We want everybody to do their favorite and go check out Respect My Region when they can check out Mitch and Joey and what they got going on on their tour. And uh, everybody else can just do us a favor. And uh, if you like what you heard, subscribe, follow her on you know iTunes, iHeart, Spotify, Amazon, Cannabis Radio, of course, and anywhere you like to wear your, um, or listen to your podcast. So we do appreciate it. And uh, thanks for your time, guys. Have a good one. We'll catch you next time. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast, republication, or retransmission of this program without proper consent is prohibited.